Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 are now available in public beta. I'm sure a lot of people out there have already bravely downloaded those software updates onto their primary devices or maybe some of you don't know how to do that quite yet and if you don't know how to install iOS 13 or iPadOS 13, I'll be sure to include a link in the description but be warned, these are still very rough betas, so if you use a device that you rely on, it might be best to wait until the full release of this software in September. However, for you thrill seekers out there who have already installed that operating system onto their phones and onto their iPads, this video is going to go over some of the features and some of the settings that I think you should enable, that I think you should try out with iOS 13 and with iPadOS 13. So I'm pretty sure most people watching this video know by now that the iPad home screen got a little bit of a design refresh, so now you can fit more icons on any given page of the iPad, and it also brings over the widget center, so now you can have a widget center on the left-hand side of your iPad home screen and have that there, you can swipe that in or out, what you might not know is that you can keep that permanently attached to your home screen even if you're swiping between different applications. And to do that, all you have to do is go to your widget center, scroll all the way down to the bottom, tap on the edit button, and you'll see the option to keep widget center on your home screen at all times. And this works great for widgets that you always wanna see as soon as you open up your iPad. So widgets like reminders or calendar appointments, or even the battery levels on all of the devices connected to your iPad. By always having the widgets available on the home screen and by pinning certain ones, you give yourself a more consistent and reliable experience every time you turn on your iPad and see the Today View. Another feature I'm sure most people know of by now is that iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 now come with a dark mode. People have been waiting for this feature for quite a long time. However, I find that dark mode isn't exactly always useful depending on what time of day it is. If you have really bright sunlight out and you have your dark mode open, it creates a lot of glare. Sometimes the text on screen is hard to read, but thankfully, with iOS 13, you can have dark mode switch automatically. To change dark mode to automatic, go to settings and then go to display and brightness. Right on the top of this page, you'll find the ability to set light or dark mode automatically. Once you have automatic dark mode enabled, you can either have it toggle from sunset to sunrise or create a custom schedule completely on whatever time you want the light appearance to show up or whatever time you want the dark mode appearance to show up. For me, I like to keep it to the sunset and sunrise schedule. That way when I'm using light mode, it's during the day. And then as it turns into night, my iPhone in the background just turns over to that dark mode. And I find that is the best experience for both modes. Another feature making its way over to iPadOS 13 as well as iOS 13 is mouse support. So not only can you have a mouse run on your iPad, you can also have it work on your iPhone as well. Now this is an accessibility feature, so it doesn't work exactly the way you might expect a mouse input to work on something like Windows or a Mac, but it does get the job done. And once you hook up that mouse, once you get used to the certain gestures, it works very similar to how your finger already interacts with the iPad or iPhone, just kind of translate it over to mouse controls. To enable mouse support, just go over to settings, tap on accessibility, scroll down to touch, and then turn assistive touch on. Once you turn assistive touch on, you will have full mouse control available on your iOS device. Now I have covered mouse support in previous videos before, but I wanted to give a public service announcement on another feature to disable when you're using your mouse. And that is the always show menu option. I see a lot of people demoing iPad OS and iOS 13, and they always have that icon on their iPad, even though they're not using any of the other assistive touch features features and it's just a little bit distracting and a little bit annoying if you don't need to use that customized button. Another great feature in iOS 13 is the ability to edit the amount of effect in your portrait mode lighting photos. Previously you were unable to change any of the lighting effects once you took a portrait mode photo. Now all you have to do is tap on the edit button. Now you get a nice
nice easy to use slider where you can control the amount of effect that's applied to the photo. Also make sure to check out the new portrait mode effect high key light mono. I think it looks really cool and it really looks like you're sitting in one of Johnny Ives white rooms. Speaking of editing, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you can now edit your videos in the photos application on iOS 13 and in iPadOS 13. Before you could only really trim the videos down, now you get a much wider array of controls inside of the photos application. So you can adjust things like exposure, highlight, shadows, contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, and more. You can also crop the video, change the aspect ratio, or flip it to a different orientation. This video editor might not be as full featured as something like LumaFusion, but it is nice for making those nice quick adjustments. Another feature to check out on your iPad or on your iPhone, especially if you don't have 3D touch, is that Apple now enables long presses to give you the same ability as 3D Touch iPhones. So now long pressing on icons in the home screen give you quick actions. You can also access the peak and pop functionality that was only previously available on 3D Touch by long pressing links in Safari or Mail, and then you can see a quick preview of that content and then tap into it to access either the full website or your full mail message. And basically almost any area where 3D Touch was working, you can now access that on your iPad and on any iPhone with just a long press. And I know some people are probably lamenting the inevitable death of 3D Touch with the new iPhones, but I think this is a great way to have all of these actions uniform, not only across all iPhone lines, but also among the iPad line as well. Another great feature to try out is the ability to share audio with AirPods users. Now this doesn't only work with AirPods. If you have any other Bluetooth Beats headphones with either the W1 or H1 chip, you can share audio between those users. To share your audio with another AirPods user, this can work in two ways. One of the ways is a proximity method where you bring your iPhone close to the other iPhone and then it's sharing audio and it should give you a menu to connect on. I don't think that feature is quite enabled yet in these iOS 13 betas. However, you can still manually connect to share audio between users. Of course, you'll need two pairs of either AirPods or any of those Beats products that support the W1 or H1 chip. Make sure both of the AirPods are connected in the Bluetooth settings. And once you're done with that, go over to Control Center, go over into the audio section. And once you're in that section, you should see both of those AirPods listed. Make sure they're both checked off. And then any audio you're playing on your iPhone or iPad will be beamed to both of those AirPods. I recently tried this on a trip where we were riding in a bus and I was able to share my audio directly with another AirPods user and we were both able to watch something on Netflix. Both of the audio streams going to each one of our AirPods. It was a really awesome experience and I can't wait for more people to try this out. And the automatic connection when iOS 13 launches. Another feature you should try out in iOS 13 is something that's kind of been around for a long time, but finally the native keyboard on iOS devices now supports swipe to type. The swiping keyboard really works its best when you only have one hand available and you're trying to type out a message. The swiping keyboard may be long overdue, but at least it's finally here and so far it seems pretty accurate. On iPad, you can also access the swiping keyboard. All you have to do is make sure that you shrink down the keyboard first then you can drag it over to one side of the iPad and then you also get that full swiping text control. Okay, this next feature is for all those Apple Music listeners out there and that is the new lyrics feature inside of the music app. Now you get a really nice big bold interface showing off all the lyrics in a song. What's really cool about this lyrics feature is that you can actually tap into certain lyrics and it jumps right there during the song. So you can just jump around between the songs if you're singing along and you miss a section, you can just quickly tap back or tap forward, and then that music track will skip to whatever section you tap. Whenever I sing along in a song, I'm constantly messing up all of the lyrics, so this is a really cool feature to learn all these songs. And again, if you are singing along, if you're doing some sort of mini karaoke routine, you can actually skip back and forth in the song just by tapping those lyrics. Another feature in iOS 13 comes in the way of the Maps application. Now we all know about that new look around feature and that is one to check out for sure, but I already covered that feature, so I wanted to share another feature that I've been using recently. And that is the ability to share your ETA inside of the map 
Maps app. So once you set your direction inside of the Maps app, you'll get a Share ETA button appearing on the bottom of the screen. Once you set that ETA, it will give an estimated time of arrival to whatever contact you set, and say during the trip there's some road work or some delays, that will also send that user a message, updating them, letting them know that you're going to be a little late. It's a nice feature to have because when you are running late, you don't wanna grab your phone, get distracted while driving. Now it will just automatically handle all of that information for you. All right, everyone, and those are the features I think you should try out with the new iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 public betas. Let me know what you think of these features in the comments below, or what are some of the features that I didn't cover in this video that you think are really great inside of these new betas. If you guys like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna support the channel in any way, like buying something from the merch store, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.